So Dina's going to be in tonight. Uh, Kubalik was out, and really tough decision. Um, basically, as simple as, as they're similar players, guys that can skate, left shot. Um, Kubi probably doesn't warrant to come out. I know even someone the other day asked the question about where his game was at. He was still involved with four or five chances against. He literally beat the goalie five hole and a half breakaway. That he made an unbelievable kick save from behind him. So, but 13 forwards will take advantage of this. I think you might see some guys uh, rotate in or out because we got to get Zadina playing. Um, he worked unbelievably hard through a very tough injury. And I'm very excited about getting him an opportunity. What do you look, what do you look for? Sort of with his game, skating. Um, he's attacking wide and hard. He shoot first mentality. Um, just you know, less thinking, skating because he can skate. You can see the tool set. Um, I think he overthinks things at times when he's not at the top of his game. But um, plenty of opportunity. Simplify things. Just go. And in, in some ways, I'm, just, I'm excited for him. Uh, I don't know if you guys appreciate how bad of an injury, or tough of an injury that was, and how hard he worked. Um, he's probably two to three weeks ahead of what I was originally told he'd be out, and that's crap to him. So take advantage of it and go play. For, for guys still trying to establish himself yep. in this league, is one of the challenges for him coming back Yes, and that'll be our message. Just simplify your game, you know, play to your ability, play assertive. I mean, here's a guy that was trying to establish his game and unfortunately takes an injury like that the way he did blocking a shot for his teammate. So, um, yeah, just simplify it, skate, be assertive, uh, go play. Uh, we'll take care of the odd mistake in video uh, the next morning. Yeah, of course. I think so. And the skill set's there. And uh, we all want it to work. Uh, and, and it can. And now it's just him playing himself into it. Uh, I think the, even the most recent two games in GR was helpful for him. Uh, get to get pace. And even talking with Benny, his first game was OK, looked rusty. And he was really good in his second game. So uh, part of the process. Kind of no, I did not. I do watch randomly just because so many guys down there, and I do talk to Benny constantly. It's the same five, six guys. Um, you know, I want to see how Elmer's doing, those young D. Uh, it's exciting. Uh, you know, we're trying to build something here, and obviously that's part of it. Upswing is, is there. Um, yeah, I just think. A little more confidence in his game, assertiveness in his game, because you see the tools there. I think he gets caught in trying to do too much at times. Basically, everything you saw here in, in the preseason, I mean, I think his eight games was an unbelievable reflection. There were some nights he looked NHL ready to be a top four, and there's other nights you, you, could, you could see it's going to take some time. But trending well, um, that's what American Hockey League's for. Yeah, I just think my entire career coming into the National Hockey League was in development, college development, junior development, ECHL, American Hockey League. I spent most of my career developing guys to the next level. And even when I interviewed with Steve in Tampa, you know, a lot that we talked about was that development piece. So, of course, I think there's a big part of that and understanding of the process of it. That'd be a Steve question, but. Would you mind taking a quick look maybe later in the season if, if, for, with him up here? If, if oh, yeah. Again, that's a Steve thing. And, yeah. and, and, you know, Steve's job is to look and take care of the long-term big picture. Uh, but for me, um, I'll play all these young guys because I think that's part of the growth, part of development. You saw it with Elmer. He grew immensely with his ups and downs early on, and he's on a good track. But... Absolutely. The more the merrier. Uh, if it's in his vision, uh, part of the process and growth to getting these guys games, we'll, we'll, we'll play him a ton. Is it good for them to just see what it takes? Like? I think so. I think that's part of it. And again, I think that'll be, you know, again, a Steve 
you know, where are they at at that time? And I'm sure it's something we'll discuss. Of course, like yeah, obviously, it's it's bottom line is winning and losing, and you put these guys in positions to succeed, and um, you know, him coming up playing Edmonton, Calgary, back to back, world class, heavy teams, you know, is, is that you know that's all part of that balance of what's best for their growth. Hag's in the lineup. He's going to be in for Osterley. Same thing, pretty much as the forward decision. Uh, it's the first time, as you guys know, we've been this healthy all year. We need to keep running some of these bodies in. And, uh, you know, maybe a little bit of the matchup, too. Obviously, Calgary's a deep, heavy team. Uh, Hag has a little more physical part to his game. Been a frustrating go for him. It's been very frustrating. Same thing. Like, he, he gets a game gets injured in the one game, uh, a long rehab. It's just it's tough to get rhythm, and, you know, we got to get these guys some looks. When you look at Calgary, obviously, there were the big, big, big name changes, lost two big players, bring other big players in. Are they – do they look much different? Obviously, I know you weren't a head coach against them last year, but are they much of a different team? Is it just they kind of just reloaded? When, when you kind of look at that? Yeah, it's, it's – you know, I had, you know, some similar questions with them today. It's really hard – for me, because I just don't see these teams. But you look at it on paper. We pre-scout the last two, three games back, and they have a heavy identity. They're probably built for the playoffs more than the 82 games. Um, that would be a dangerous team if they get there uh, and play the playoffs, which is good. Those, we went through in Tampa when you, you, you have to look and play a certain way when you're ready to win, and I think they're trending that way. Is this almost one of the best ways to get it, where you get them twice in, in two weeks, or is it the familiar pairing? Just yeah, no, again, I think it's yeah. even where we're at, you see us, it's no matter who we're playing, it's more about our game. I mean, even look at Edmonton the other day, like a very frustrating game because we pretty much played to our identity. You know, we defended well. We didn't give up very much. Every underlying number, we were the better team five on five. and. We just gave them easy offense. So I think no matter who we play, it's it's more about us. So with, with Zadina, are you going to put him on the power play in Kubelik's position? No, not right now. Uh, you know, we're still ironing out what this is going to look like. But just want to get his five-on-five five game going. He, he, you know, obviously he's got a skill set. He could help us on the power play, but I don't expect it tonight. I've just seen on the uh, Flames Twitter that Rasmus Anderson was struck by a car riding a scooter last night. Oof. Just your reaction to that, but do you ever worry about guys? I know they on the yeah. road. Yeah. Yeah. Do you worry about those kinds of things as a head coach? Of, co I'm of course. I mean, those those are real things. Uh, that's scary. That's the first I've heard of that. Uh, so you know, hopefully he's fine. And yeah, you know, of course, it's you're, these are still kids, young adults. They have families. Of course, the welfare of them. So yeah, that's uh, it's disturbing news. Is there a message to your players when you're out there? No, I just think if you hopefully build a culture where there's an understanding of you take care of yourself and you know try to limit yourself in those types of situations. But I don't know anything you know about that. Of course, like I mean, these this they're living. Uh, obviously, you want to take care of yourself away from the rink. How important is it? A little bit segue, but just establish that home ice advantage again. You guys, it seems like it's kind of slipped a little bit here lately. Mm. Great question. I don't even know. We're, it, we're, we probably reflect our overall. We're, we're, we're as 500 of a team as you can get, and I'm sure we reflect that we're both home and away, maybe a little more reality. Wherever. Of course, we want to take advantage of play well at home, just the momentum you get certain. I mean, the other night, like there's no doubt in my mind those penalty kills, the place was electric. It pushed our guys. We get 3-2, and... We did everything but score in the third. I, I think that's a feel from we were pushed from that home ice. Of course, you want to take advantage of it, and it's like anything else in our game. Um, take advantage of opportunities like that. Is it still a big deal in a league? I think so. We, we talk about it. it's important. Like obviously, we're trying to build and grow something here, and they're here. They're loud. They're electric. This is a very passionate fan base. And I do think it's a real responsibility uh, from myself and our guys.